right, what's going on YouTube? This is CJ. It's time to give you guys another quick look at the reef. And for anyone new, if this is your first time seeing my channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this vid. And I promise you, I'll try to keep you guys updated as frequently as possible. And for those that don't know, this is a JBJ 45 gallon all in one system. Been running roughly for, I say, 14 months or so. And I've been slowly kind of tiptoeing my way through year two, trying to avoid any landmines. Of course, you know, you can't avoid them all. I've had a few incidents here recently, but, you know, the tank's bouncing back and everything is still, you know, doing its thing. So this vid, we're just going to cover a few things as far as corals that's worth talking about and uh, a few changes I have coming up. I'm gonna also going to take a second and try to address a few people asking me about, you know, what am I dosing? How am I maintaining my water quality? You know, and all that good stuff when it comes to reefing. So let's go ahead and hop to it. This update is going to be short and sweet. Now I will say, all the footage I recorded for this video is roughly, I say, 30 minutes or so before my moonlight phase kicks on. And for those that are curious, I run my blues from 11.30 a.m. till midnight and my whites from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. So it's roughly 8.30 or so. So if you notice some of my euphilia is not open as full, this is normal for my tank. You know, they normally start closing up towards the end of this cycle and, you know, getting ready to close up for the night. So nevertheless, we're going to take a look at some corals up close, especially a few that I haven't shown any love recently. So for those that were curious about SPS in my system, here you go. You know, it's really easy to lose track of these guys between the leather corals and the frog spines, torches, you know, everything that sways in the current when these guys just kind of stay still. But they've been in my system for roughly seven or eight months and been doing great. You know, I've had, you know, a lot of failed attempts with acros and different pieces of frags, but these guys have been doing fantastic. It's almost to the point now to where I can't run my mag float past this area without it getting snagged. I haven't moved my rockscape in a long time, so if it's getting snagged, definitely lets me know I'm getting plenty of growth and it's really starting to pick up here recently. I think it's due to my new routine. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but so far so good. So let's take a quick look at the Duncan Coral. It's kind of following up on that vid I did a few weeks ago, you know, when I showed how to glue corals down and move them in your tank. And the reason for it, you know, this guy was getting stung and beat up pretty bad by all the sweepers from the frog spine and the torch coral. So far so good. You know, he's responding great to the new location. Not only that, you know, the new heads that are growing along the bottom are getting more room to grow. So I'm looking forward to how big this thing's really going to get. So the next core I'm going to highlight for you guys, it's going to be my red plating monopore. Now it's really interesting watching him grow from one little bitty slither to where it almost thickened up, started to encrust the rock work, and then finally started to plate outward. So it was a slow and steady process, but it's now, you know, it's finally starting to take off. So I'm really excited about how big it's going to grow and hopefully you know it doesn't grow so big i have to move it but you know so far so good i'll take the winds where i can get them I'll give you guys a quick look at the a can i added to my system a few weeks ago now this is the first a can i've ever owned one of my subscribers identified it as a rainbow a can i'm not sure what type but hey it works for me now everything's going well trust me this guy you know is not showing you his full potential he's fully inflated usually most of the day but he's starting to close up for the night you know besides the pally starting to encroach on his space Really no concerns with this location. You know, the flow's working out well, lighting's working out well. You know, everything's just working, so I'll keep you guys updated. So for anyone in the hobby that's looking to add some drama to your tank, you know, some tension, some stress to your life, just go pick up one of these red bubble tipped anemones. Now I'll tell you so far, you know, I've been knocking on wood, keeping my fingers crossed, everything you can do to try to keep all the good karma and good luck on your side to make sure these guys stay put. But with that being said, I think I've kind of cracked a little bit of my anemone puzzle with making these guys happy. So I would say roughly a month ago is when I first added this guy to the tank. And I say this guy because I started with one of them. And as you can tell, I have two. You know, I'm thinking this is really related to a water change I did. Now, I don't think the water change did it as much as pouring the new batch of water on top of this guy. I don't know if it irritated them or maybe, you know, the change of salinity or temperature, something, you know, something stressed this guy out enough to where he decided to split. So now I have two of them. You know, two anemones are not bad as long as they stay in this location, but I'm still trying to figure out, you know, if that's the real reason they split. So some of you guys in the hobby, if you notice that happened with your tanks after a water change, let me know. I'm really interested in finding that out. Now on the brighter side, you know, I think I finally solved the puzzle of keeping anemones in one place. 
or at least I have a working theory that I'm trying to prove at this point. You know, prior to this, I had an old anemone in the system when I had my MP10. The MP10 was mounted on the back wall, had all the primary flow blasting down the back wall of the tank, and I couldn't figure out why the anemones, you know, wouldn't stay in the front. They were literally walking around the tank and get right in that blast. So I was thinking it had to do with flow. Now, when I introduced the gyre, everything changed. You know, I pointed the gyre's nozzle right at the pillar of the rock work. It bounces down, gives all kind of chaotic flow, and they get a really, really good blast of water at this location. And I think that's the difference. So in my theory, you know, provide the anemones a good, you know, hidden place for them to attach their foot that they can be safe. You know, give them good lighting and good flow, and you have a good chance of, you know, keeping them in one place. If you don't give those things, trust me, they're gonna walk around. And this may backfire, but so far, you know, a month without moving, there gotta be some kind of truth to it. So I'll keep you guys updated. Now, the last core I wanna talk about this video with you guys, it's gonna be that bright green mystery core I had on top of this rock work. You know, I later identified it as an encrusting hydropower core, at least that's what I was told. So I'm just gonna roll with that. But the main reason I'm mentioning this is because of the damn sweepers from that thing. Out of all the sweepers in my tank, I haven't seen anything cause as much damage and, you know, chaos as this thing did in my system. Over the last few months, I watched it take out two really nice pieces of coral that I wanted to keep. One being, you know, a red gynopore coral, which are hard to keep, you know, in their own right. And I was doing pretty well with it until that guy reached out and just pretty much burned them up. And then I had some blue zoanthids. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot to anyone else, but it's hard finding blue zoanthids for a decent price. And I got a hell of a deal. I wanted to watch them get destroyed by that guy as well. So, you know, I was going to live with that until one night I looked over and he started to reach over and sting my frog spin on the right side of this rock. That's when I had the last straw. So as of right now, that guy has been ripped off the rock work. You know, whatever was left, I've chipped off and he's currently mounted on the back of the tank, you know, in the sand bed, waiting on his next trip to the LFS so I can trade him in. So more of the story is this area of the rock work is now ripe territory for new corals. And I'm never putting another one of those things in my tank. The sweepers on those things are, you know, probably the most powerful sweepers I've ever seen of anything in my systems. So that's pretty much going to cover all the corals I wanted to highlight this video for you guys. You know, for the most part, everything else is doing well, so no real reason to really talk about them. And for those that are curious, you know, I did lose track as far as counting them, but by my estimation, I got easily 40 different pieces in here, maybe more. And for anyone new in the hobby, it didn't happen overnight. You may look at my tank and think, damn, you got a lot of core in there, and I do. I got a lot of money invested. This is a very expensive hobby, but it didn't happen overnight. You know, a colony here, maybe a few frags there, you know, over a few months, string it together, and before you know it, you know, you can fill your reef tank up. So that's just one of the advantages of having a smaller system. You know, you can eventually fill it up to the point to where you don't have to spend much more money on corals, unless you have to move something, of course. So as far as future coral plans go, you know, I'm really gonna turn my attention to that pillar on the right. I gotta replace that empty spot now, but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. So, you know, I do have to keep in mind the sweepers from the Hollywood Sterner Chalice Core right below that area. But for the most part, you know, it's, it's good prime territory. So maybe some encrusting chalice corals, maybe something orange or red or, you know, I'm really not looking for anything else green, but you know, we'll see. Maybe I'll find something I like. But other than that, um, the tank is pretty full at this point. And with the anemones moving and taking over that area on the top left, I really don't have any other room there to put corals. So that works for me, saves me money, right? <laughs> so I'll keep you guys updated on that. So as far as future livestock changes, I've really been playing around with the idea of removing the clownfish from my system. You know, I've had those guys in here for about six months and all they ever do is host that mag float in the back right of my tank. And as you can see right now, you can't see them. You know, I'm not a fan of having any fish in my system that's gonna be, you know, all bow low to no show just ammonia with no kind of reward for it so you know i'm either going to replace those guys with some new clowns maybe something more you know to the liking of ro uh, red rose bubble tip anemones or i may replace them with something else and just you know go clownfish free in my system so i'm definitely going to get those guys out what i'm going to replace them with you guys will just have to wait and find out but other than that you know everything else is doing well it has not resurfaced in my system for the last few months i'm waiting to see you know what the next round is going to come but so far everyone's happy and healthy so you know no complaints as far as livestock goes so let's take a second to talk about dosing of my tank because i get a lot of questions about how i maintain my tank's alkalinity you know magnesium calcium you know everything you need to have a successful roof tank in the hobby and honestly i don't do anything besides water changes i know it's hard to you know for a lot of people to believe now i will admit this 
I did have a small, you know, stint with calc and my auto top off. I, you know, tried to learn how to use it, but it ended up backfiring a few different ways, either by me overdosing my tank and ultimately, you know, not fully understanding how much my tank consumed to even justify using the calc. So at that point, I removed it. So my tank has been calc free for the last four or so months. I would say four and a half months now, and everything's been fantastic since. You know, as I continue my journey in the hobby, you know, I can't say I'll never dose in the future. That's not realistic. But for now, you know, water changes are maintaining my alkalinity at around 10. And my calcium stays, you know, anywhere between 450 and 480. And my magnesium stays around 1400. So, you know, that's pretty much due to the frequency of my water changes. That's one of the huge advantages of having a mid-sized or, you know, close to nano-sized tanks. Is because you can actually maintain your water quality with just water changes. So right now I'm doing two or three five gallon water changes per week. You know, as I have time, sometimes I do them back to back on Friday and Saturday, and I try to get one during the middle of the week if I can, if I have time. But so far that's done great. You know, not only is it maintaining my alkalinity, calc and magnesium, but it's also maintaining my low nitrates. You know, between all my other filtration measures I'm taking between the algae scrubber, pond matrix, you know, and good skimming, Water changes, nitrates stay between zero and five parts per million. Alkalinity stays steady. I mean, everything stays steady. So one of the huge advantages of keeping a nano tank, and I highly recommend, you know, and for those that are wondering if you should dose or not, if you can't understand what your tank's consuming, don't dose. You know, it's just like, don't dose anything in your tank that you can't test for, right? So if you don't understand those things, don't deal with it, especially with a nano tank. So that's kind of my thoughts on dosing in the hobby. So that's pretty much gonna cover everything I wanted to this update for you guys. And regarding water changing and dosing in the hobby, you know, as your tank matures, you gotta be flexible and roll with it. So for now, water changes are working for me, but if it changes in the future, you know, I'll definitely keep you guys updated. And as always, hey, you guys like, comment, subscribe. You guys do what y'all do. Y'all be easy. Happy reefing.